have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you, that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Many Israelites do not fully understand that many are called, but a few are chosen. Some people believe because they are born male, they are anointed to lead Yah's people. Other people believe because a person is born female, the Most High will not choose her nor work through her. If the Most High could use a donkey to show himself strong through, how much more would he use a woman to bring forth deliverance to his people? We have to deprogram the doctrines the disciples of Satan has indoctrinated into our people in this awakening. Those who hold on to this belief have been deceived by the kingdom of darkness. The scriptures stated twice in the Old and New Testament that the Most High would pour out his spirit on his people, both the man and woman would prophesy. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet to Joel, and it shall come to pass. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. When the Holy Spirit came, Yah's spirit rested upon all who was in the room. Yah's spirit did not discriminate. Everyone was on one accord and praying. Everyone received the Holy Spirit. Once the disciples received the spirit, they went out to teach others. Before the disciples went out to teach, they were chosen by the Most High to be Yahshua's disciples. The disciples were not random men who appointed themselves. When Yahshua chose his disciples, he asked them to follow him. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all. And followed him. And after these things he went forth, and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, Follow me. And he left all, rose up, and followed him. The day following, Jesus will go forth into Galilee, and findeth Philip, and saith unto him, Follow me. Once the disciples received the Holy Spirit for the first time, all the Israelites who believe and accept the message were baptized with the Holy Spirit. And they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day, there were added unto them about three thousand souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers. The Holy Spirit gives us power and ability to speak the truth. It is not through human wisdom that we find truth. The scripture said the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit revealed truth to us and tell us the things to come. Human wisdom is not sufficient to teach and lead on our own accord. We must have the Holy Spirit. Israelites, just because the scripture said Yah would pour out his spirit on his people does not determine that Yah has chosen a person. The sex you were assigned at birth does not decide if the Most High has chosen you. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, the Most High predestined you for his purpose. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Some people are chosen to be vessels of honor. Some are chosen to be vessels of dishonor. There are Israelites the Most High gave the gift of great faith. There are others the Most High has given the ability to heal the sick. Being male does not automatically qualify you to teach nor to lead Yah's people. When the Israelites were bond men and bond women in Egypt, there were plenty of Israelite males who were able to lead the Israelites out of bondage. However, the Most High did not choose them. Yah chose Moses to lead his people out of Egypt. It was Moses' destiny to lead his people out of captivity. Yah has assigned Moses this calling before the foundation of this earth was laid. Being male or female has nothing to do with your calling or being chosen. The scriptures reveal the Most High has given his people gifts and talents. Some Israelites are called to teach. Other Israelites are to encourage. Other groups of Israelites has the gift of discernment. 
Some have great wisdom. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. The Israelites who are able to interpret different tongues, the encouragers and those with great faith and wisdom. We need the Israelites who were chosen to utilize their talents so we can have the proper balance in our communities. We cannot focus on one gift, which is teaching. Just because the kingdom of darkness make it easy to have a platform, it does not indicate everyone should become a teacher. Self-appointed teachers are dangerous to our community. There are Israelites whom the Most High has chosen and they reject the call. Instead of using their gift and talent to further the Most High's kingdom, they use their talent for the kingdom of darkness. Some Israelites have no idea they were chosen. Due to a lack of knowledge, they are perishing. The scriptures reveal the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are a few. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Israelites, we need to pray that those individuals who were chosen in this generation would step into their calling and fulfill their duties. Not every Israelite would be a King David or a Moses. Some Israelites the Most High will use in a mighty way, others he will not. Regardless of what your role is, it is important. Seek the Most High to find out what is your purpose for your generation. Israelites, be careful on how you treat Yah's anointed. Some Israelites disregard those the Most High put in your mix to help you. Yes, not all people who appear to be for you are truly on your side. This is why you should test their spirit to see if they are of Yah. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. If you can properly test their spirit, you can decide if you want to continue to fellowship or flee from the wolf in sheep clothing. When you spot the wolf, it does not indicate that you should be hostile and disrespectful. Simply cut them out of your life. When you come against those who are truly anointed by the Most High, you are coming against the Most High himself. Some Israelites cannot discern this. Let me repeat myself. It is not the person the Most High is using you are cursing out. It is Yah you are cursing out. This is why the scripture said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. In addition, the Most High said to Samuel, it is not you they reject, it is me they are rejecting. Saying, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. And the Lord said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. When the Israelites asked Samuel for a king, their reasoning was they wanted a king to fight for them. They had no idea they were rejecting the Most High as their king. The reason it is the Most High you are coming against, the anointed individual is receiving his or her information from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Most High. When you reject the information, you are rejecting the Most High. Israelites, it is important that you can discern who is of the Most High and who is not. If you cannot discern and you condemn an anointed Israelite, you place yourself in a position to be judged by the Most High. When Miriam and Aaron criticized Moses, the Most High judged them harshly. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek, above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses, and unto Aaron, and unto Miriam, Come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud, and stood in the door of the tabernacle, and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words, if there be a prophet among you. I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him 
will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. This is why some Israelites are plagued with all kinds of mishaps in their life. Many mistake those plagues with the curses when it is the Most High judging them for coming against His anointed. The individuals who are appointed by the Most High are only the mouthpiece. Yah is speaking through them. Israelites, there are individuals who are anointed and chosen among us today. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand, and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. Satan's disciples were appointed by the kingdom of darkness to be a snare to those who are truly seeking the Most High. They are self-appointed teachers and leaders. They twist the Most High's words. Their doctrines are not of the Most High. Pride and their love of money is the reason for their passion for the word of Yah. Satan's disciples has taken the hierarchy the Most High set up for his people to mislead the Israelites in the awakening. The Most High is the father to us all. Yahshua is the head of a man. The man is over a woman, his wife. Daughters of Zion, there is a hierarchy. Your husband is the head of your household. This is why you have to choose wisely when it comes to marriage. Do not settle. Let the Most High help you make the right decision. It is important. Any decision your husband make will affect you and your children. If the Most High judge him, you are a partaker in the judgment. The scriptures reveal the judgment that befall Ananias and his wife for lying about the amount he sold his land for, and the Most High put him and his wife to death. But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost, and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down, and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much? And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young man came in, and found her dead, and, carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. She was following his lead. Look what happened to her. Remember, when you are married, the two becomes one flesh. In addition, Ananias thought he was lying to Peter, but he was lying to Yah. Yah's anointed represents the Most High. Daughters of Zion, you do not want to marry a man who do not have a vision, goals, and how to achieve those goals for his family. Choose wisely. If the daughters of Zion is not your wife, you cannot control, nor is she subject to submit to you. A husband is responsible for the household the Most High made him over. You have to be a husband to have such privilege. If you choose to reject the help meet the Most High gave you, then you also have reject the role the Most High gave you to lead a woman, your wife. 
The daughters of Zion is your help. If you could do this on your own, the Most High would not have given you a help me. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an help meet for him. The Most High was going to kill Moses because Moses failed to circumcise his son. His wife stepped in and circumcised their son, which caused the wrath of the Most High to cease. And it came to pass by the way in the inn that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Then Zipporah took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet and said, Surely a bloody husband art thou to me. The daughters of Zion is a help to you, not a snare. As the head of the household, you are to provide for your family. You are to lead your wife and children. You do not have authority over every daughter of Zion simply because you were born male. If you do not have a wife, you are not to try to lead someone else's household. If a daughter of Zion is single, her head and covering is the most high. For the scriptures say, Yah is her husband. He is married to the Israelites. For thy maker is thine husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. The God of the whole earth shall he be called. Satan's disciples took the hierarchy the Most High set up for structure in the Israelite community, combined it with the talents and gifts given to the Israelites to further his kingdom, to place restrictions on the Israelites, especially the daughters of Zion. Satan's disciples produced many false doctrines, including the doctrine of a woman cannot teach. Through the deception, many are not utilizing the help the Most High gave them in the daughters of Zion. Yes, the daughters of Zion can teach the word if the Most High called them to do so. When a daughter of Zion is chosen, it should not intimidate her husband or her peers. The focus should not be on her, but the message she has or whatever she is called to do. She can utilize the gifts and talents the Most High bless her with to help her household and her people. Many Israelites are confused due to the false doctrines coming from the disciples of Satan. If there is a problem regulating the household or community, you ought to consult the Most High for an answer. The Most High will correct the daughters of Zion and the men of Israel if they are out of order. Do not mistake an Israelite woman utilizing the gifts and talents the Most High gave her to serve the kingdom for trying to lead or taking your position. Some of us are trying to fulfill our calling and submit to our Elohim. We ought to honor and place Yah first over everything. The Most High has the final say in the lives of both the man and woman. Yah also called and chose the daughters of Zion to fulfill his purpose. In order to build a kingdom, you need a man and a woman. The false doctrines coming from the pulpit of Satan's disciples has infiltrated the awakening, causing many to fall. The Most High led you out of the bondage called Christianity. Do not place yourself under a new bondage called Hebrew Israelite. An important statement I want to make, the daughters of Zion did not strip you, men of Israel, of your crown. The Most High strip you of your crown. The kingdom of darkness is oppressing you and taking over your households and community. If Satan is successful in oppressing you, he received permission from the Most High. Satan cannot do whatever he wants. He must first get permission from the Most High to strip you of your crown. If Yah is allowing Satan to dominate you, then iniquity was found in you. Your goal is to find out what sin gave the kingdom of darkness the permission it needs to oppress you. Once you find out, deal with the sin. If we want to survive, we have to learn to work together. Being chosen to do the work of the Most High is important, and it comes with great demand and a heavy penalty if we go against the will of the Most High and cause His people to stumble. This is why only a few are chosen out of the many that are called. For many are called, but few are chosen. A big responsibility comes with being chosen. For example, as the chosen people of the Most High, we are to be an example to the other nations and teach them the laws of the Most High. We failed in our responsibility to uphold to the covenant we made with the Most High. Instead of elevating the Most High, we disgraced the Most High. Due to our wickedness, he is judging his chosen people. When the other nations 
see how we behave towards our Elohim, they will perceive that they can do the same, causing them to err. A person the Most High has chosen represents the Most High. When they speak or do what the Most High anoint them to do, the Most High's reputation is on the line. For example, I cannot respond to trolls' comments however way I choose. I have to examine myself and ask how would the Most High respond. If I respond in anger and use derogatory language to express myself, I would not produce good fruits. Other Israelites who come across the comment will assume that they can react the same way. Responding while operating in the flesh will give the Most High a bad name. The same way that satanic camps, groups, and assemblies give us all a bad reputation through their wild doctrines and wicked behavior, anyone who believes Yah is with a person who operates in the flesh is deceived. Remember, sin separates us from the Most High. It does not matter how small or subtle the sin is. Sin is sin. The wages of sin is death. The Most High will not be in the mix of sin. Yah has high standards. He will not lower his standards for anyone. When Yah decree a thing, it will happen. If anyone goes against his command, whatever penalty Yah has in place for violating his command, he will enforce. It is important that those who are in leadership position uphold to the holy standards of the Most High. The Most High will only operate through the humble. The reason Yah will work with the humble, they will not steal his glory. Satan's disciples believe they are the ones who convince a fellow Israelite to accept their heritage. They believe they are the ones doing the work. They believe because they have done their research that their wisdom surpassed all understanding. Out of their pride comes doctrines made by men. In those doctrines, they elevate themselves and condemn everyone else. The Most High cannot work through a person with these attributes. They will steal his glory. Moses was chosen to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. On several occasions, Moses lost his temper with the Israelites. When he saw the Israelites had corrupt themselves and made idols, he destroyed the tablets that had the Ten Commandments written by the Most High. Moses disobeyed the Most High when he struck the rock twice instead of commanding the rock. Yah had to judge Moses harshly because he was chosen by the Most High to display the Most High's glory. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock, so thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord, as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock, and he said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because ye believed me not, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. If Yah allowed Moses to act in a sinful manner, the people would imitate his behavior. Moses was a humble man. Because of the anointing Yah placed on his life, Yah could not allow him to get away with sin. Moses was not allowed to enter the promised land. You cannot disregard the Most High statutes and commandments when he is working through you. Disobedience is like witchcraft. The scripture said witchcraft is an abomination in the sight of the Most High. Yah has severe penalty for those who participate in such practice. Disobedience caused the Israelites to be exiled and in captivity until this day. Many lives are at stake when the leaders stumble. This is why the Most High must judge and hold them accountable. The Most High allowed Moses to see the land flowing with milk and honey, but he was not allowed to enter the promised land. And the Lord said unto him, This is the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thy seed. I have caused thee to see it with thine eyes. Thou shalt not go over thither. When you are chosen out of the many that were called, when you sin, the Most High will judge you severely. The select few that are chosen must maintain the Most High's holy standards. Today we have people who appoint themselves as leaders and act however way seem holy to them. Self-righteousness cannot replace the statutes and commandments of the Most High. Satan's disciples have brainwashed many. The Israelites who uphold to the doctrines of devils go around spreading Satan's corruptions. 
Israelites, it is one thing to be called, but completely different to be chosen. We are the chosen people of the Most High. Yah hold us accountable. Judgment starts with us. Israelites imitate the leaders who disciple them, just like the 12 disciples imitate Yahshua's teachings. It is important those who spread the words of the Most High follow Yah and let him lead. The scriptures say Yah order the steps of the righteous. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Israelites, do not admire self-appointed teachers and ministers that are popular. Whatever is popular with men is an abomination with the Most High. Being popular does not mean you are anointed nor chosen. It simply means you are being led by the kingdom of darkness. The world did not love Yahshua. They hated Yahshua. Since you represent the Most High, they will hate you too. The awakening is speaking against everything that he then deemed true. If you are anointed and called by the Most High, the world will hate you too. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many are on that path. Narrow is the road that leads to life, and a few find it. Israelites, it's no coincidence that a few will find the road that leads to life. A few were chosen out of the many that are called. A remnant will return to serving the Most High in the Spirit and in the truth. In addition, a remnant will be saved. Israelites, make sure you are on the path that leads to life. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness.